Hello, I am Dr. Lingam Vijaya, a glaucoma specialist working at Shankanetra LA Chennai. I am going to talk to you about glaucoma in terms of types, associated risk factors, importance of treatment and that includes complaints. In other words, we will be giving a overview of the disease called glaucoma. So, let us see what is uh, glaucoma. Glaucoma is a group of disorders that is characterized by certain features, namely raised intraocular pressure. The raised intraocular pressure when if it is left untreated leads into the damage to the optic nerve and this damage will lead into loss of vision. How does the vision is affected when there is a damage to the optic nerve? Usually it takes away the peripheral vision first, later on the central vision is taken away. Unfortunately, what is lost in glaucoma is lost forever. There is no way we can retrieve the vision that is lost. So, in view of this problem, people call glaucoma in general as a silent disease. You may ask why the eye pressure goes up and leads into glaucoma. Eye pressure goes up because of various reasons, but generally eye has something called a drainage system in front part of the eye, which we call it as a angle of the eye. So, this drainage system can become defective with the age and can lead into one type of glaucoma called the open angle glaucoma or it may be due to the mechanical obstruction to the drainage system that is mainly seen in the second type of glaucoma called the angle closure glaucoma. Primary glaucoma is usually because of some problem in the drainage channels leading into open angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma or it can be secondary glaucoma. Let us know more about primary glaucomas because they are the most common form of glaucomas. Most of the people with glaucoma seek medical help when the disease is in advanced stage. The major challenge we face nowadays is how to improve the detection rates of glaucoma in the world, especially in developing countries like India and China where most of majority of the people are living. Unfortunately, in a developing country like ours, most of the people seek medical help when the disease is in advanced stage. The major challenge we have today is how to improve the detection rates. Detection rates of glaucoma can be improved when we improve the awareness of the disease in the public. That is the purpose of this talk. Let us share with you how an eye specialist diagnoses glaucoma. Usually, the diagnosis is based upon certain clinical eye examinations when one sees a consultation with an ophthalmologist. So, first thing is intraocular pressure that is the eye pressure and eye pressure measurements are done with a device called the tonometer and the standard tonometer that eye specialist uses to measure the pressure is called applanation tonometer. Even though the raised eye pressure is hallmark of glaucoma, eye pressure in an in individual can vary within the day. So, one measurement of the eye pressure sometimes may, may not be conclusive. So, even in spite of having the disease, eye pressure at the time may be within the normal range. In view of this, one may call a patient multiple times to check the pressure when there is suspicion of glaucoma. The second examination consists of what we call it as looking at the health of the optic nerve. It is an important examination and whenever individual goes for an eye checkup, ophthalmologist or the optometrist looks at the optic nerve to know whether there is damage to the optic nerve or not. The third examination, once we suspect there is a damage to the optic nerve, we try to see how is the visual field for that individual. We use a technique called the perimetry to assess the what is the extent of the visual field damage in the individual. 
other than these three standard clinical examinations, we also do what we call it as a gonioscopy. It is very important examination technique that differentiates people from open angle to the angle closure. It is a small lens, we keep it on the surface of the eye and see how is the drainage channels. In open angle glaucomas, we will be able to see the drainage channels clearly, whereas in the angle closure glaucomas, there will be mechanical obstruction to the drainage channels from the surrounding structures of the eye. Once we diagnose glaucoma, the next step will be treatment. So, how do we treat? There is a small difference between initial treatment with the open angle glaucoma and also angle closure glaucoma. With the open angle glaucoma, we start off with the eye drops that reduces the eye pressure. Whereas in angle closure glaucoma, we start off with a small laser procedure called laser iridotomy. The purpose of the laser iridotomy is to create a small hole in the black tissue of the eye called the iris that kind of it leads into widening of the drainage channels which was otherwise blocked mechanically from the surrounding structures. Once the laser treatment has been done for the angle closures, depending upon the eye pressure and extent of the damage, the eye drops will be started to reduce the intraocular pressure. Many times one eye drop may not be enough to control the intraocular pressure one may have to use more than one type of drops. So, whenever there are multiple drops being used, it is very important to remember to give 5 to 10 minute gap between the two drops. It is also important to know that eye is connected to the nose and the throat by a small duct called the nasoracrimal duct. Whenever we apply drops, part of the medication can get into the nose or the throat and some people do feel that happening and this part of the drop can get into the systemic circulation by absorption through the mucosa. In view of that, there is always a problem of side effects with the eye drops systemically. So, we ophthalmologists generally advise to follow what we call it as a nasolacrimal duct occlusion. Basically, after applying the drops, you are supposed to apply pressure at the canthus and close your eyes for 2 minutes. So, the drug will stay within the eye and will not get into the nose or the throat. By following this simple technique, the systemic side effects associated with the eye drops can be eliminated almost totally. Once the treatment is started, usually a specialist calls the patient to come back to the clinic to find out what is the effect of the medication. And the effect of the medication is assessed in terms of how much eye pressure drop has occurred and also to figure out whether they are comfortable with the medication and also to know whether there are any side effects due to the medication. So, if our eye specialist happy with the amount of the reduction that came with the eye drops and we call the patient to come back after few months for the review. The follow up is very, very important in management of the glaucoma. It is not a one time thing that you start the medication and just continue to use it because the disease can be progressive. In the follow up, again, eye specialist will look at what is the control of the eye pressure, whether the optic nerve is remaining stable without any further damage to the optic nerve, whether the visual field is remaining stable. So, in other words, a person with glaucoma has to go for the follow-ups very regularly, use the eye drops without missing a dose and the follow-up is for the lifetime because there is no way we can remove the disease, we can only keep it under control. There are other modes of treatment for the glaucoma. Even though we start off with the medication, during the follow-up, if the disease control, both in terms of eye pressure control and also the optic nerve 
damage stability is not satisfactory, we do consider adding additional methods of treatment. Additional method can be a something to do with the laser which is called as a laser trabeculoplasty or it can be surgery. Since uh, disease is asymptomatic and silent, the chances of missing the disease is very high. Is there a solution to tackle this problem? Can we screen the population quickly and to know whether they have glaucoma or not, whatever stage it is? Unfortunately, screening is not optimal for a disease like glaucoma because we do not have a single test to say whether the person is having glaucoma or not. So, in view of that, the screening programs for the glaucoma is not recommended and not very popular anywhere in the world. So, what is the option? At present point of time, the option we have is what we call it as a opportunistic screening. You may ask what is opportunistic screening? That means, whenever individual goes to see an eye specialist or the optometrist, there is need to do what we call it as a comprehensive eye exam. So, one should follow this comprehensive eye exam for all the people who seek vision care specialist help simply because when we do the comprehensive eye examination, any disease in the eye can be detected and we will not miss anything out. To do the comprehensive eye examination, one may have to spend time in the clinic, but it is worth the time because by doing the comprehensive eye examination, the entire eye is examined in detail, any form of the eye disease will be detected. So, the solution at present point of time to detect the disease in early stages before they develop the symptoms happens to be a detailed comprehensive examination for all the individuals who visit the eye clinic. I said there are lots of people with the glaucoma in the country. Does all people prone for the glaucoma? Not necessarily. There are certain identified risk factors for glaucoma. The single most important risk factor for glaucoma is old age. So, with the age, the risk for the glaucoma increases especially once they cross 60 years of age, the risk increases tremendously. So, in other words, people with the age should consider having the eye checkups regularly to know whether there is a disease of glaucoma or not. The other known risk factors for disease are myopia and family history of glaucoma and people who are on long term use of the steroids they are at a higher risk to develop glaucoma. With the positive family history of glaucoma, the lifetime risk of developing open angle glaucoma is almost 20 percent and for angle closure it is 12 percent. So, whenever there is a family history of glaucoma, there is a need to start the checkups much earlier than 40 years of age, maybe they should go start going for the checkups from the age of 30 itself. As an ophthalmologist, we always tell patient when they come for the follow up, how are their children, how are their siblings and we also recommend that they should go for an eye check, check up to know whether they have glaucoma or not. Maybe I should sum up my talk with few important points. It is important to remember glaucoma is majority of the times is a chronic disease, nothing happens overnight. So, if the diagnosis is made at in the initial stages, if the treatment is advocated with a regular follow ups, glaucoma due to the dis blindness can be minimized to a great extent. People think glaucoma is synonymous with the blindness, it is not true. If it is diagnosed early, if treated early, one can avoid the blindness totally for the lifetime, one can have good vision and enjoy their life to the full extent. The best way to predict glaucoma is going for a comprehensive eye examination. There are no shortcuts to it. Eye pressure measurement alone will not yield sufficient information. 
looking at the health of the optic disc, if necessary doing the assessment of the optic disc with the newer tools and also doing the perimetry is very important to diagnose glaucoma and also to do the follow up examination for the glaucoma. It is highly recommended to have an eye checkup after the age of 40 years regularly and people with the risk factors for glaucoma should start having the eye checkups much earlier than 40 years. I hope you enjoyed this talk and it had an impact on you. If there is any family history of glaucoma or other risk factors for glaucoma, please do seek an ophthalmic examination to detect the problem in the early stages. Thank you.